This Soviet truck with automatic cannon is as This Soviet truck with automatic cannon is SPAA. It was designed to fight air targets. But we in War Thunder don't care about that, we like to destroy all kinds of things, and this vehicle can offer exactly that. Gas MM-72K is truck equipped with 25mm cannon, which is big enough so its shells can reach significant penetration. You wouldn't expect SPAA to be so effective at fighting tanks. Its armor-piercing round can go through 55mm of armor at close range. It's enough to be able to frontally engage almost every tank you can meet, at least at low battle ratings where this vehicle is placed. It has a little bit less penetration than most of the opponents will have, but the difference is not so significant. Most importantly, a little reduced penetration is a small price for the advantages you get in return. For example, rate of fire, 240 shells per minute, which makes wonders, especially in combination with its very interesting reload speed. Basically, there is no reload. Even if you decide to switch between different ammunition belts, there will be no delay. It's one of such vehicles that can kill everything around as long as you have ammunition. So take the maximum amount of ammo into battles. Its quantity won't affect your survivability anyway, it is stored in one box. The only thing you should pay attention to is weapon overheat that can happen after around 10 seconds of continuous fire but that's enough to destroy multiple opponents, so shouldn't be a problem. Unlike usual tanks which have to aim at different tank parts to knock out different crew members or look for weaker armor plates to be able to penetrate, with this gun that has huge rate of fire and no reload, you don't need to aim or look for weak spots. It's enough to casually spray the shells all over the opponents. But there is one drawback that will make usage of firepower advantage significantly more difficult. There is a cabin in front of the truck that will not allow you to operate the gun in that area. When gun is pointing forward, it will be elevated so much that even low-flying air targets can be outside operating zone. For this reason you will have to turn the cannon sideways when engaging opponents, which requires either some basic map knowledge to turn the cannon in advance where opponents are expected or turning the truck away from line of fire after opponent was detected. But that will make you unable to shoot immediately which gives chance for your opponents to open fire first. Especially considering that it's a wheeled vehicle and they have difficulties making turns in a limited space. That makes driver's cabin the biggest inconvenience of this vehicle. On a good note, turret's rotation of 35 degrees per second is very fast, so it doesn't take so much time to turn the cannon sideways. Additionally, once the cannon barrel is not blocked by cabin, you will have a very good depression angles. Minus 10 degrees. That is unseen for Soviet vehicles. And of course elevation is perfect, 85 degrees. It's designed to fight planes after all, though damage against planes wasn't impressive. 25mm high explosive shells are not that big to expect reliable kill, and rate of fire that is more than enough for tanks is not enough to easily hit planes. Even if low tier planes are relatively slow, it was still difficult to hit them. So most of the kills happened when they were attacking me, though engaging them when they are doing the same can be deadly for both, as open top truck is very vulnerable to plane attacks. Winning such fight is a pure luck. So when planes are passing by, they are difficult to hit, and when they are attacking your truck, you are likely to be destroyed as well. For this reason the vehicle was most effective fighting ground targets, where it has advantage. Tanks can also shoot through the whole truck, but at least their rate of fire is much slower 
and since APHE shells need to penetrate some armor to activate, main gunfire is your least problem. The most dangerous are their machine guns, especially high caliber, which just like shells can penetrate a whole vehicle but have much higher rate of fire. 7mm shield protecting loader and gunner is the only armored part on this vehicle, but it can protect you only from low caliber bullets and even then gunner is not fully covered. Vehicle is so fragile that it cannot be where the main action happens where artillery explosions can instantly hull break it. So flanking is the only way to fight when mobility is more important than armor. If you can drive around opponents and attack from the side of their respawn, you can pretty safely engage multiple opponents at once. A gun with no reload will let you to shoot them all faster than they can turn around. Maximum speed of 45 kph may not be very big, there are plenty of fast tanks at low battle ratings, but truck accelerates really quickly. Most importantly, your accuracy doesn't matter when you have such huge rate of fire that allows you to shoot on the move. It doesn't matter how many shells you miss, as long as at least a couple of them can hit the target. At the same time, staying in motion forces opponents to miss more often and the best way to stay alive when you have no armor is not letting opponents hit you in the first place. Quickly driving out of tough situations saved me many times. It's also handy to hide the cabin and peek around the corner with vehicles back. Even if everyone in turret will be knocked out, you will still be mobile as driver and engine will stay behind cover. And additional crew member in the cabin means your truck will not be one shotted even when everyone in turret dies. It might look like an easy solution to gun's elevation problem when moving backwards cabin is not blocking the line of fire, but it is not. Reverse is only 5 kph and you need to move fast to stay alive. But since truck has low mass, not every route will be suitable. It can be difficult when you come across concrete fences, trees or other objects Collision with them can completely stop the truck and since you cannot aim forward, shooting them in advance is not an option. In arcade, truck will face more armored opponents, but on the other hand, penetration indicator will help you to find weak spots in their armor, so fire effectiveness will stay pretty much the same. But it will be more difficult to finish opponents when the last crew member is behind thicker armor that cannot be penetrated. But the biggest problem will be the name tag telling whole enemy team, including planes, where are you hiding with this fragile vehicle. You will lose the ability to flank opponents, which is the only thing this vehicle can do well. The best way to play the vehicle is to take advantage of these same name tags and plan your attacks based on information from minimap. The only advantage in this game mode is that it becomes easier to hit planes because of lead indicator. But anyway, arcade is not that game mode where fragile vehicle could shine. SPAAs usually struggle when engaging tanks and GAS MM72K is one of few that can reliably penetrate all similar battle rating vehicles. That allows it to use SPAA specific characteristics when fighting ground targets. I would rate this truck 6 ammunition boxes out of 10. Sometimes it can be difficult to use because of no armor and inability to aim in the direction of cabin but it is significantly different from usual tanks and that can be used in your advantage.